Dearest Collective, my confession takes, takes me back 20 years. I was newly married, young, hopeful and fearless. My husband and I had recently moved into our first home. It was going to be our first Christmas together and I was determined to impress my new parents-in-law who had so graciously welcomed me into their family like the daughter they had never had. My mother-in-law was, let's say, a strong character. The kind of lady who knew what she wanted from life and possibly also what she wanted from a daughter-in-law. But I wasn't daunted by this and looked forward to the challenge of being the perfect wife and the perfect daughter-in-law. We decided we would host the family Christmas Day at our house and invite my parents-in-law, my new husband's sisters and brothers, and a selection of cousins, aunts and uncles. In total, there were to be 15 of us, but I wasn't phased. This would be the ideal opportunity to show everyone, especially my mother-in-law, what I was made of and what a good choice my husband had made. The key to success was in the planning, and this is clearly all going to go perfectly yeah, yeah, well, isn't obviously. it, serenely? Even though we weren't very experienced at catering for more than two, and our house was a little on the small side, I felt very confident that I could provide the perfect Christmas day and earn myself some respect and acceptance into the family. Weeks before the big day, I had the schedule for the perfect day written, rehearsed, and meticulously planned. Now, my mother-in-law did like things just so, and I'd been given fair warning of this in the years prior to our marriage. The table had to be set perfectly with all the correct cutlery, napkins, sauces, and so on. And plates most definitely had to be warmed. Knowing that we would not be able to provide matching place settings, my mother-in-law had very generously offered to lend us a 15-piece dinner service just for the day. This dinner service was very special. It was displayed proudly on the dresser in their home. I know, yeah. my mum's superior has head in hands already. Handed down over the generations, this set was very precious and was used only at Christmas and Easter. How kind it was for her to lend this to us and how lovely it would be to serve my first family Christmas dinner on this special dinner service. So the big day arrived, the table had to be laid the previous day, leaving me in the morning to put my plan into action and serve a wonderful Christmas meal and impress the family. As you can imagine, every appliance, utensil and surface was employed for this huge feast. And since the oven was going to be completely full of turkey, roast potatoes and parsnips, I had come up with a clever plan to warm the plates for the meal, which I think, <laughs> I have to say, everyone else is going to say is stupid. A plan that would ensure warmed plates, but that would not take up any precious space in my overwhelmed oven. I was on schedule and all was going to plan. Twenty minutes before the meal was to be served, I put on the tumble dryer. Oh, no. I had calculated that if I ran the machine for 20 minutes, this would heat the drum sufficiently so that when I then put the crockery inside, the heat from the drum would be enough to heat them through to perfection. What a plan! With the 20 minutes up and the drum of the tumble dryer hot, I carefully placed the precious dinner service inside. They fit quite comfortably, and at this point I was wondering why this technique was not employed more often. When, every, when everything was in the tumble dryer, I carefully stepped back and closed the door. No. No. I had planned for everything that day, but not what happened next. Did you know that on some models of tumble dryer, when the door closes, the drum automatically begins to turn? I didn't. It only needed one rotation for me to grab the door, open it, and stop the drum rotating. Sadly, it only needed one rotation to smash all 15 dinner plates, wow. two tureens, and a large meat platter. I realize now that the naivety of my plans that day, and yes, I think on reflection it was all a little too ambitious. It's a tumble dryer! <clears throat> we ate dinner that day on a variety of plates, and my mother-in-law was given my nephew's Bob the Builder set with matching beaker and dessert bowl. <laughs> Super! I, le I left it to my husband to explain that in the rush to get everything ready, unfortunately the loaned dinner service had been left at work by my husband. Some 20 years later, I still shudder every time I close the tumble dryer door and think of that fateful day. I have never confessed my mishap to anyone before now, and I feel I need to ask forgiveness, not from my parents-in-law, who frankly should have lent me their hostess trolley as well, but I ask forgiveness from my husband, as he had to manage my hysteria all day, to lie to his parents, spend all of his Christmas present money on a replacement dinner service, and pick small shards of crockery out of his clothing for the next six months. We've hosted Christmas many times since and had some fun family times, but when we do and the dinner is served, the plates are always cold. Well, I would suggest to you there's 
a daft old plan, but it's an immaculately written confession, and Joe, we appreciate that. Our first Christmas tale of a disastrous Christmas dinner, but clearly the, the fault was even thinking that the tumble dryer was going to stay stationary. Sister Rebecca. What an amazing confession that was. But, you know, you can sort of see her logic, can't you, in a way? I mean, it was quite a good idea. As long as it stays stationary, it yes. Yeah, I mean, she could have just used the hot water method. I find that's quite uh, effective, True. don't you? Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I think the guilt that Joe must have felt throughout this time, you know, for her husband having to pay for the replacement, that's terrible. I think she's already paid her penance, actually, and uh, obviously she didn't intend to break the dinner ser service. So, uh, Joe, you are forgiven. I think everybody heard in their heads the noise of that one the single smashing. revolution of the drum as they all just collapsed against each other. Mother uh, Sister Rebecca, what is the hot water solution? What is that? Well, you just run the plates under hot water to warm them up. But the, oh, well, then they'll be wet. Well, you can then dry, you dry them. them. Oh, OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the second stage <laughs> oh, of no, the I mean, again, I thought that, I think it's a logical idea, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very good idea. It didn't work. But uh, do you know this thing of mother-in-laws? I never understand how horrible some mother-in-laws can be or how terrifying they can be to some daughter-in-laws. I mean, obviously the mother-in-law, clearly she had no sense of humour about what had happened. I mean, your daughter-in-law puts all the plates in the tumble dryer and they break. Horrible, but you know, you've got to laugh about it. I bet they've never we laughed about it. We don't actually know what the mother-in-law would have said. Well, it doesn't sound to me as if in subsequent Christ Christmases they've, they've looked back and laughed particularly. So I just think, you know, don't be scared of your mother-in-law for goodness sake. I mean, I've, you know, we've all got, well, I've got children with girlfriends, one child, and you try to be nice to them. Just be nice to them, that's all. Anyway, you're forgiven. Uh, thank you very much. Imagine having the mother superior as your mother. She'd be absolutely the perfect mother-in-law. I'm a very, very nice mother-in-law. And uh, here comes the words <laughs> of Brother Matthew. Yeah, I mean, clearly the lesson's been learnt here, and I think it is, a, it is a real pity that she's only confessing now, because I think this would be a great story to tell every Christmas over the table. And also, I think the idea of warming plates is overrated, frankly. I've never understood it. I don't need my plate to be warm. I don't Really Frankly, either. the food's not on it long enough for it to get cold anyway, <laughs> so I wouldn't have bothered putting But putting them in the tumble dryer, what an excellent idea. Just, uh, yes, be very careful about closing the door afterwards. I like the idea of, of the mother-in-law being given Bob the Builder matching... Serves a right. Speaker and deserves a right. And it's a good play, that Bob the Builder one, as well, probably the biggest one they've got. <laughs>